adventure friends. We made it to day two of the Ciudad Perdida hike. Uphill already, which is good. I was just saying I felt more agile. I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it is a slick morning so far. Uh, it's gonna be an intense day. They said today we're actually gonna start hiking. Yesterday wasn't hiking, we were just going for a walk yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First part of the day, they said it's gonna be like a Colombian flag. Up and up down. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> so let's get on the trail, already huffing and puffing. <laughs> day two begins. So we've been hiking for a good little kip this morning so far. It's not been too aggressive. There's been some uphills, right? Yeah, we've had a few uphills. I'm probably already red. <laughs> that's all right though. That's that's exciting. Um, it's work out. We're about to start the uphill section here in a few minutes. Basically, it's about 45 minutes, 50 minutes directly up a hill. Rocky, muddy, exciting. Cows. <laughs> so it's getting super rocky. I want to set this rig down and uh, and attack this hill. <laughs> We're gonna conquer it, right, Aaron? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Go team. Go team, awesome. Go team. Woo. Team, awesome. Rocking it. How'd it feel? <laughs> I just caught my breath. Uh, <laughs> that was intense. Had a little a watermelon break and. Uh, now we're off. Yeah. For the second part. Maybe the, yeah, maybe the second part. After when they paint the material, then they get out, they make the rope, well, rope like this and start to make the backpack. Also, the like natural color is white, but also sometimes the indigenous, that decoration like this. Like only the women can they make the backpack. The women is making the backpack what they are thinking in the mind. Sometimes they thinking in the rivers, so they make it symbols in the rivers. Sometimes they make it symbol of the animals, so they think it, leave the symbol in animals, or sometimes the mountain or the trail. And after when they when they are making the backpack, the woman they check if everything is good, they leave it. By the in the when they are making and something is bad, no good, they decide to destroy all the backpack and start to make it a new one. So one backpack like this they can spend it two months or two months and a half, more or less can they spend for the lady. We made it to our first little stop in a little Kogi village. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, we just learned about the hand woven bags. They take mm -hmm. how long? Is a couple months? Yeah, one to two months to, to create. create. Yeah, and they beat what the what's the leaf called? It was the agave leaf. It's the same leaf that they used to make tequila. Yeah, they beat it down until it turns into a thread and then they make these amazing bags and There's, little bracelets and stuff too. But yeah, like they're so neat and it's really interesting to hear about how only the Kogi women are the ones who actually make the bags and do all the weaving and everything like that. And the designs on the bags are based off of what they're thinking about in their minds at the time. So it'd be at rivers or mountains or streams or whatever. So it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We gotta get back on the trail. We gotta go. <sighs> on the trail. You There's... know, this is hard, but it's really rewarding. Like, everywhere you look, it's gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> Though we are at the back of the pack because we are recording, um, we're kind of getting behind people, which is fine. But you think, like you see them ahead of you and you think, man, if they can do it, I can do it. Let's keep going, yeah. right? What's interesting about them being ahead is 
everyone starts in the same spot. Like no matter where you are in life, in your relationship, if you're building a business online, whatever it is you're doing, everybody starts in the same place. Birth, <laughs> that's where you start. And everybody experiences different things along their journey. Mm -hmm. So it's like, which path do you choose? Which journey do you choose? Yeah. And what's cool about journeys is there's trails along the, along the route. Like the whole thing is a trail system. And there's forks in the road and everything. Or you get it. villages. Yeah, and you get to choose what it is that you experience in your reality. Let's yeah. check out Kogi Village. Now we are in the village, the name is Mutanyi. The indigenous in here, they are nomads. So one family, they don't have one house for all their times. So one family, they have three or five different farms in different places. So what they do is spend the three or two weeks in one house, hunting, collecting food, plantations on plants, and then move the other different lands, collecting, plantation, and then move another different land. So at the same time, it's for them, it's when they land, they rest a little bit. These two houses, one is for the men, one is for the wife. The family, normally they have two houses for one family, one house for the father, and the father sleep with the boys and the mom sleep with the girl. For them, it's a private to use the same house to have it, one house for them to live. And because for them, it's in the day, is only for us. But the night is for the spirits. If they sleeping together in the same house in the night, for scary, maybe they want to have some relation, some touch it. And they no want to have it some bad spirits coming in the same time of the baby. So the indigenous, that's why they separate in different houses. And the same time, they say that the, the night in the day, in the day is for us, but the night is also for us to meditation, to think or make a reflection. So that's why they live in different houses. Difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations. Beautiful destinations. That's what Les Brown it. says. <laughs> So it was a really good day two so far. We had the biggest, longest uphill climb thus far. Woo. It was only like uh, maybe 50 minutes, I think they said long. Seemed but like forever. It was completely uphill the whole way, uh, just going and going. And then finally we got to the top of the hill and then it was downhill. For two hours yeah. downhill. And now we've got about a four hour hike in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, so, so far this will be the longest of all the hikes. Uh, but yeah. they didn't say that it was that difficult on this one. So I'm curious yeah. to see uh, what ends up happening. Yeah, we were up really early. So right now it feels like it's like four o'clock or something like that, but it's actually just turned 11. <laughs> which, is, which is hilarious, <laughs> yeah. But this is awesome. Right now we're at a Kogi camp. They made us an amazing lunch. Um, it was really good. Yeah. Like above expectations for food. Um, for sure, for sure. Fo show, fo show. Yeah, so we don't want them to leave without us. So yeah. we're gonna go now. Fight. <laughs> <laughs> yep, backpack's back on. Thoughts about crossing the river? I did it. <laughs> that was special. I mean, I used to be scared of that, and then I just did it. So that's cool. <laughs> We 
just made it up a pretty huge steep incline. Yeah, yeah we did. Not gonna lie, we, we, it was pretty tough. <laughs> If it's tough for him, it's like extra tough for me, I think. <laughs> for every one of my steps, there's two of hers going on. Yeah, it pays to be extra tall for these things. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, it's quite rewarding. We get to hang out with uh, some of the tried people. It's pretty rad. Yeah, they're pretty epic climbers themselves. Uh, lunch was amazing. Again, I'm just uh, thinking we're about... another lunch? No, no I'm just, oh. I'm just rem reminiscing one more time. <laughs> it was good. But we gotta get climbing again. I think that uh, we got the vomit. Yeah, let's go. Guys, it's nighttime. We're in the jungle. He's we're, worried about lighting. <laughs> it's like oh, our lighting's not good. It's like who cares? We're in the jungle. So we just. <laughs> Like so, deep in the jungle. So we're wrapping up day number two. It's been a good day. We are surrounded by like the best humans possible. Very good humans. Really good humans. It was a really, really interesting day. There was a lot of uphills and downhills. You know, some of them were like, oh, a little short uphill and a little short downhill. While some of them totally kicked our asses. There were moments where I felt like I was going to fall backwards and that I just like didn't know if I could make it. But I was like, if other people have made it, I can make it. I saw them making it. Yeah, yeah, and we've heard that, you know, other people, uh, like, for instance, Miguel was telling us that the oldest guy that he had on the trip was 75 years old. You know, that's, that's um, double our age. Yeah. More than double. Yeah. About double. About double our age, yeah. It's almost triple my <laughs> <laughs> <joking>. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, yeah, he awesome. said, he said the, the, the key to it is that you're constantly working. And he said that, you know, even though the guy was old, he says the guy was perfect health. He exercised a lot. But the, even though he said, Miguel said, even though he was slow, he constantly put in consistent work. And that goes along the lines of everything that we talk about, about Be Adventure Partners, mm -hmm. about your life, your relationships, yeah. your businesses online, yeah. is it, it's not something, that it, like it's a marathon. It's something that's going to take you through life. This is something that is gonna take you through everything that you're doing. So yeah. when you think about the consistent of it, this old dude that he talked about nailed it. Yeah, I felt like the old dude today. It was really just like, I made it. Like, like every time we hit a checkpoint or arrived at the fruit station and like all the people are just resting and everyone's resting up, it was like a boost of energy and it was just like, you can keep going and you can do this, like you can make it. Um, it was really rewarding. Brian was so worried about the lighting. So I still had this polarizing filter on it because it's been super bright out. See what, and, what happens. And I was wondering why the heck is this so dark? But it's nighttime, so you gotta take the polarizer off. So the really cool thing about tuning out and removing yourself from everything, like really removing yourself from everything and just immersing yourself in nature it allows you to heal in so many ways mm -hmm. though this trip is the most taxing thing i've ever done on my body pretty sure what it has taught me was that just tuning out and connecting with nature it's just like a total restart total restart i feel refreshed like i don't have anything like garbage in my mind mm -hmm. jumbled up in there like i've just been like having really clear beautiful thoughts and being able to like just tap into this ancient history <laughs> like we're walking around this is crazy today we're walking around and there's like tribal people walking with us Kogis, like these people have been living off the land for centuries and they still do. And then we come in like in our flashy colors and whatever, with our mm -hmm. big fancy camera and like there's so many people doing that. And it was just such an interesting contrast of like 
getting these people who have like never lived in the jungle or mm-hmm. the wilderness and putting them into history. Yeah, it's like a time warp. Yeah, it's so weird. It's beautiful though, like a mm-hmm. really cool experience. Yeah, and then you yeah. see the influence that all these other cultures coming in have on them, like yeah. seeing seeing these kids wearing, you know, like Nike caps and or Levi's earbuds. caps. Yeah, uh, one was listening to <laughs> maybe a podcast or something. Who, Who knows? knows what they were listening to? Some Who music knows? maybe? You, I heard uh, the one guy who had earbuds on, um, he was wearing like traditional wear, but he had earbuds in and I heard like rap blasting. <laughs> so maybe someone just like left their iPod there and he's like, okay. Maybe you cool. ordered one online. I don't know. And what's so cool about the iPods and iPhones and stuff like that is they don't come with instruction manuals. So if the Kogi can figure it out also, that's a, actually a, a great testament to the usability of Apple products, right? Just technology in general, right? Yeah, it's absolutely cool. hilarious. But cool. we crossed some some major, there were some major hurdles crossed today. <laughs> one of which was when you were crossing the river and I was standing on the bank filming yeah. Filming you. Yeah. That was hel- that was hilarious, <laughs> but I was so proud at the oh. same time. Like it was so cool because the water, luckily, was it's a, a dry season right now, so it hasn't been raining. Uh, it's been pretty humid in the mornings and the afternoons, but so th- so the river's been super low. Now there's stones that that just peek up above the water. Sometimes the mm-hmm. water's splashing over it, and you can just kind of make that path across the river. Like there's this obstacle that's in our way that could sweep us down if we slipped. But guess what? By just like focusing on that next rock and then looking all the way across and be like, okay, well, I, I can look across the river but that's not gonna get me to the destination because that, that's so far away. But what mm-hmm. if I could just focus on what's next in what I need to do, in this case, <laughs> cross the river. Okay, where's the next stone? Erin was tackling it and I was so freaking proud of her. There was only one part on the river where I was like, Ooh! when I was crossing it, as soon as I got to, it was, like it was a, a round piece of two. round yeah, wood, wood and it, it was just, I don't know. I used to do gymnastics and stuff and walk across balance beams, but it was like on top of two rocks and it was just kind of like, and then there were these two other planks of wood side by side and they looked like they had been there for a while and I was like, those ones? Or risk being on this like round thing, walking across a balance beam across two rocks and a waterfall. Yeah. I wasn't sure which path. And then Brian's like, why don't you try the, try the, the little planks? And I was like, okay. <laughs> I scuttled across. <laughs> and she rocked it. We got across and it was such a beautiful moment. I was so proud of her. So today was totally exhausting. We're, exhausting. we're here at the camp on day three, which is the next video in this series. Uh, we're actually going to be hiking to and into Ciudad Perdida, which is the lost city. What? And uh, our tour guide, Miguel, has been amazing so with Expo and Tour Steven. and Steven and as Expo well. Tours. Yeah. Really cool guys. They like they hike with you all day and then we come here for dinner and they serve you and they make sure everybody's taken care of. And they've got this huge team and this massive operation taking care of dinner. It was just really cool to see like how orchestrated this whole thing is. Yeah, and on this tour, we have had the best food ever that we've had in Colombia, Colombian food specifically. Yeah. It has, they, they did not hold back on the flavor. Finally, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, food gods, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been really good. We haven't had great luck with Colombian food so far. Yeah. Um, but this trip, if, you want, if you're wondering or you're considering this trip, this is 
This For is the sure. one. And something the next to note is amazing. And something to note about that is we're not being sponsored by Echo, mm -hmm. uh, Expo Tours. We're not, you know, getting any kickbacks or anything like that. We just really love this tour and mm -hmm. it's been really great, which is why we're documenting it. Um, However, if you own a tour company and you want us to make a film for you, guess what? You're more than welcome to sponsor us. We'd be more than happy to, to go wherever you're, you need that tour filmed. So, we hope that you had fun hiking with us on this adventure. So, day two of the Ciudad Perdida, the Lost City hike is under wraps. We're done with it. Done. Oh, but first, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe <laughs> and hit that bell. We come out with new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And some of them are travel adventures like this one. Some of them are about love, life, relationships, mindset, you know, getting to where you want to be in mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. So if you want, definitely subscribe. Yeah. And if you really like this video, hit that thumbs up button. That way, uh, that way, th thumbs up are just nice. They're a nice thing to do when you watch a video that you yeah. like. Yeah, you can leave us a comment. Let us know if you've done anything like this before in your life or if you want to. Um, but yeah, we made you something. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but in our description, we've got a brand new mindset guide. It's called Mindset Magic Method. Go ahead and grab your free copy because you're going to love it. Yeah, yeah. So until next time, friends. Adventure on. Adventure on. Hasta luego. See you in the morning. The trees here are like the biggest trees and so tall. Oh yeah. Got a relaxation station. <laughs> We're going downhill. Yeah, yeah. Is this the last part of the day? Hopefully. <laughs>